Now I've had this new Z900 RS SE on loan from Kawasaki for a week or two now. I've been sharing a few snaps of it on Instagram and clearly the reaction shows you that they've built something pretty special. But is it good enough to say it's the cream of the crop or the best of the bunch in the retro market? Well today, we'll take it for a spin and find out. Now, as I see it, there are three key competitors for this bike. And we're looking at the larger capacity, more premium, more performance orientated end of the retro spectrum. So firstly, obviously the Triumph Speed Twin. Then you've got the BMW R9 T. And of course, the Yamaha XSR 900. All of them excellent bikes that I've had plenty of time on and featured on the channel. And so how does this upgraded SE version of the Z900 RS compare? Now look, we've got to talk about styling and aesthetics because this is a retro and that's a key part of retro ownership. And I will say that's got to be one of this bike's massive strengths. You can see the clear references back to the Zs of the 70s with the teardrop shaped tank and that long tail section, which is a signature feature of bikes of that era. So it does feel like it's got some authenticity and real heritage to it. And look, you've got some really nice detail on this bike as well. I mean, these twin clocks with the font and design that matches the original Z1, the font on the side panels as well. The fact that they've designed those cast wheels to look a little bit more like lace spoke wheels and even this little Z logo in the paint on the tank, it just looks absolutely fantastic. All these little details add up to something that feels really special to ride and out of everything that I've borrowed recently, when I open the garage and see this or put it in the studio to take some photos, I'm just like, yes, this thing looks incredible. Now this SE version doesn't change a great deal in terms of the physical form, but what it does get is this absolutely banging yellow paint job. It's called Yellow Ball, which does sound a little bit like a rather unpleasant medical condition. But yeah, even as someone who wouldn't normally go for a yellow bike, it's not really my cup of tea. I have to admit, this does look really good. I think it also helps that you've got the gold anodized forks, you've got the gold on the wheels, and also the yellow on the Oli's shock at the rear here. And it all ties together to make something that looks really quite punchy and noticeable, but not in a garish way. It really still looks very classy. For me, versus the other three bikes I just mentioned, this is easily top of the tree. The XSR 900 is a cool looking bike in a bit of an unusual way, but it is basically an MT-09 with the body kit, and there are plenty of parts that don't really look like they've even tried to make them retro. The R9T can look good, but also up close it starts to look a little less tidy. Stuff like the fuel injectors aren't exactly in keeping with the heritage vibe. Triumph on the other hand, well they're excellent at that sort of thing, and while I would say that the Speed Twin and the standard Z900 RS are on a par in terms of looks, I think this SE just edges it for the extra bling and the daringness to go so bold. In fact, so good looking is this bike that of course you'd be absolutely gutted if you owned one and got it stolen. And in fact, for any bike, I'd do anything I could to improve my chances of getting it back. That's why we recommend Monimoto GPS trackers and we also thank them for sponsoring this video. Now look, the main advantage of this device is that it's built to be super energy efficient and so it can run off its own internal batteries for months on end. In fact, it's up to 12 months. That means that if someone does nick your bike and they pop the seat off, they can't just follow the power cables back to the device and remove it because it doesn't have power cables. Now they've also got super easy to use apps for both iOS and Android and it makes the whole setup process an absolute doddle. And the device and tracking works globally so everyone watching can use it. Plus they've been kind enough to give me a 10% discount code which you'll find down in the description along with a link to their website. So once again a massive thanks to Monomoto for their support. Now let's talk about the handling on this bike which was always going to be pretty decent because it's based upon their Z900 Nick which is of course a great starting point and I mean sure they've adapted the frame to take this teardrop shaped tank and they've lengthened the subframe and it is a little bit more weighty about three kilograms but give or take you're getting modern naked levels of handling now with a retro you might also want to do a bit of town stuff so you'll appreciate that it's light on its feet and you've got a nice upright riding position with higher bars than the Z900 but also it can hustle on the open road it feels great through 
returns and this SE version it's enhanced a little by the Odin's rear shock and the Brembo braking setup. I mean are they really necessary upgrades for a bike of this retro genre? Possibly not but undoubtedly they do contribute to a slightly better riding experience than the standard bike, better braking and a better ride at the rear and a remote preload adjuster which is a great feature of course if you occasionally carry a passenger but i think the star of the show on the road for me is the 948 cc inline four which is just full of creamy smooth torquey richness again it's derived from the z900 but they've tuned it down a bit for mid-range and torquiness and for me i think that's a good thing it might not make the same peak power but it is an inline four that feels super usable at road speeds and still easily quick enough. I mean 109 horsepower at 9,500 RPM is plenty for road legal activities. Realistically there's all the grunt you'll need and also it makes for a lovely soundtrack to your ride as well. <laughs> The only slight drawback for me is the snatchiness of the throttle at lower speeds. It's a bit of a challenge to ride through slow corners smoothly, for example, and low speed maneuvers are the same. I mean, this bike isn't as bad as the previous Z900 RS I borrowed, so maybe they've improved it a little bit, but still, it's certainly noticeable versus the competition. Now, you could potentially remap it or get a booster plug or try measures like that, but I think realistically, the best cure is probably just learning to ride around it and really becoming very deft with your throttle application. Once you get the hang of it with these micro adjustments of the throttle at lower speeds, it does become manageable and it shouldn't spoil what is otherwise a very, very nice engine. But the thing is, as a riding experience, they're all there or thereabouts, these retro bikes. I mean, the XSR 900 is pretty awesome to ride and I love that CP3 triple cylinder engine in whatever bike they put it in. The R9T has its own unique feel with the Boxer Twin, and for some people, that's what floats their boat. The Triumph offers the most grunt and growl with a 270 degree crank in that 1200cc parallel twin. And so honestly, I think that's what it comes down to, which engine configuration you prefer. It's one of the biggest factors in how a bike feels to ride, and each bike in this part of the market brings its own flavor. They're all really good, and so I think I call the riding experience pretty even, and it'll really come down to personal taste on what you want the motor to feel like. Now look, I'm just editing this video and I think this looks like a bit of a cop-out to say they're all roughly the same, but what I will say is, we're not talking sports bikes here where you've got minor differences between the suspension and braking and handling the chassis setup and it makes you know a big difference to that really aggressive riding experience we're talking about retro bikes which are for going out and having a chilled sunday ride having a good time and not really worrying too much about that stuff and what you will find is if you shortlist this down to like two bikes you know they're the ones you like the look of the most and they're in your budget go and test ride them and the one that makes the right kind of vibes and gives you that throwback feeling you know the one that gives you the best tingle in the seat is probably the one to go for not the one with like outstanding braking. Now the other big factor when you're buying any motorcycle is the price and I think it's fair to say that the Yamaha is pretty much streaks ahead of the rest. I mean perhaps they have been quite quick and dirty with the styling job to hit that aggressive price point but it has to be said they've packed a lot of performance and features into a bike that offers great value. Now the lower spec R90 Pure, the Z900 RS standard model and the Speed Twin all come in about a grand and a bit more. This SE model is just over 30 grand and then the proper full fat R90 is just over 14. So I think you'd have to give the XSR the full points here and because the BMW R90 Pure is a bit more basic than the rest I think I'd probably put them bottom and so that leaves the Triumph and the Kawasaki sort of somewhere in the middle. What I do like about the Z900 RS and then the SE is you've got a little bit of choice with how much you spend and how much performance you get. I've made plenty of videos about the Triumph Speed Twin and plenty of people in the comments are saying they love to buy one with fully tricked out suspension doesn't seem to be on the way and so I think maybe the Kawasaki edges it just for that option of flexibility you can spend a bit more and get something a bit more popping or if you're just going to take it easy and don't really care about the performance or the yellow paint you can save you know over a grand the only thing I would like on this SE model is perhaps slightly better spec tires these Dunlop Sport Max are probably okay for the standard bike but when you're paying a bit more and the component trees are you know a touch above 
it'd be nice to have something a little more tacky and reassuring. And also, if you can say this about tires, something a bit more exotic. So where does that leave the Z900 RS SE? The best of the retro bunch? Well, quite possibly for me, yes. It might not have the out and out thrills of the XSR900, but it is far better looking and feels way more authentic in its heritage. It's better value for money than the BMW and every bit as good to ride. And versus the Triumph, which would previously have been my pick of the bunch, it just feels that little bit more special. For the couple of weeks I've had it, I've been super excited to take it out, go for a quick blast, to stop and take pictures with it, more so than any other bike I've tested recently. It's a bike that reminds you that motorcycles are just really fucking cool, which you can sometimes forget when you're doing it every day. As always though, I'd love to know what you think of it down in the comments. And if you wanna see more super tasty retro bikes, then here's my pick of what's new on the market for 2023, linked to on the screen right now. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.